So we recently took a look at how we can create our own custom yet simple membership site with Bricks and some other tools. Well, one of the things you may want to do now to take that to the next level is have the ability to have people to subscribe. Then you can notify them when new content is added, when new offers are available, or a million other things. And you may be thinking, well, I've got a Facebook group or I've got an Instagram feed, and I can keep in touch with people via those methods. And you absolutely can do. The problem is when they change what they offer, they change their algorithm, or they just disappear, your audience is gone. Much better to have your own dedicated mailing list that you are in full control of, and then you can use that to send out updates, notifications, offers, and a million other things. So how do you actually go about getting people onto this mailing list? Well, there are various different ways in which you could do it. And there are certain things you need to take into consideration when you're planning how this works. First of all, do you want to keep this really, really simple? At which point you could just create a simple form, store those in your WordPress database, and then you have that information there. It's not the best way of working, but in a pinch, it probably would be an option. Better way of doing it is to use a form and then connecting that up to an external service or a tool that allows you to send emails out. Let's take a look at that method. I'm going to use Fluent Forms in this example. I've got the free version installed, so this is not the pro version. If you come into integrations, inside here you can see we have some basic integrations. Now you are limited in what you can do here because this is the free version, so they need to have the ability to upsell. You could use MailChimp. So if you had a free MailChimp account, you could connect this up, just enable it, click the little cog icon, and then you just drop in your API key to connect up to that. But then once you've got that set up using the API key, you can have that form send that information over to your account and add those people into your mailing list. So if we create a new form, we can start with a blank. You can use templates if you want to, but let's start with a blank form. And this now allows us to build our form out. Now, what I would 100% recommend, unless you have a very specific use case for this, is to keep your sign-up form to two fields at most. That's going to be the name, so you can personalize things. And pretty much the only name you need is their first name, and then you want to have their email address. So you can simply drop in the name fields, drop in the email, select, and then we can get rid of their last name and simply have their first name. So there basically is your form. I would also recommend that you have a checkbox to confirm that they are happy. So for example, a GDPR confirmation, and then connect that up to your privacy policy and so on, just to make sure that you have the required information confirmed before they actually subscribe. This, like I say, is a very manual process. Then we can name this, rename it, and then we can just change this over as well. And we have the basics of our form set up. You can save this and then you can come into your settings and your integrations and you can connect this up to your integration, whether you're using something like, say, like MailChimp, MailerLite or whatever service you're using. You can connect that up and you can customize it. This is all integrated into WordPress. So this is a great starting point if you're on a budget, but there are still better ways in which you can work because you are still then relatively limited in what we can do. Another way of working is to be able to use some form of automation plugin or tool or service. For example, I've got Flowmatic installed, and inside here I've got integrations, and I can connect this up to Bricks Form, for example, Fluent Forms, and I can connect that up to external services. This is going to give you more flexibility. And even if you see an integration not available here, most platforms will have an API option available. The beauty of moving up to this level is that you have the ability to create workflows. So instead of just getting someone subscribed and then push them over to, for example, whatever platform you're using to send those emails out, you can do other things. You can have a sequence of different things that will happen. So you can have a thank you email sent out afterwards. You can wait a certain period of time and something else happens. So automation opens up more functions and possibilities over just having a simple basic form. Let me just quickly demonstrate. If we come into, for example, workflows, we haven't got one created. So let's create a new one. You see, there's the first thing, and these all work in a very simple way. You've got a trigger, which triggers a series of actions. There could be one action, it could be multiple, it could be 20, 30, 50, 100, doesn't really matter. So first of all, there's your action. We can change this, and we could say bricks form, for example. So if you want to use the native bricks forms, you can do that. You can choose what happens, a new form is submitted. 
and then you can go to continue and then you can just continue again, test this out, and then that will be the trigger. So we'll say save and close. So we can capture that data from the form being submitted. And then you can do other things. So for example, you may want to send this over to somewhere else. So you can say, click on there, and then we can say, let's do something else. You could use an API, for example, and then you can just change set of the API inside here and you can have this connected up. So we can keep on building this out, use conditional logic and so on. And then that form will do multiple different things as it goes through the automation. This is a really powerful way of working. But with something like this, you do need to understand how it all works and get familiar with it. While it's not that difficult, it does have a bit of a learning curve. Probably one of the easier ways of working, though, is to use a platform that's dedicated to handling email marketing and so on. And that's where Omnisend, the sponsor of this portion of the video, comes in super handy. Now, as always, with any sponsored content, I am not going to express any opinions. I will just demonstrate how some of the features here work. Then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. Before I go any further, though, I'm saying I'm only using the free version here. So you could test this out exactly the same as I am for zero cost. And if you want to upgrade, you absolutely can do when you need to. So let's take a look at how this would work. First things first, you're going to need to create an account. Like I say, I've just set up a free account, so you can do exactly the same and follow along. Next up, you have to connect your website to the Omnisend account. I've created videos on how to do all this. There's plenty of documentation on their website. It's very, very easy. There's a simple plugin that you can use inside your WordPress website that does all the heavy lifting for you. All you need to do is install the Omnisend plugin, connect that up. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do, tell you where to find everything. All you need is the API key. Once that's done, you are connected and ready to go. So now inside our dashboard, we can come over to, in this example, the form section and say view form types. And inside here, we've got various different types of forms that we can use and pop-ups and things like that. So I filtered this down to collect subscribers and I want the embed form so we can embed this into our website. So you can see this gives us a couple of different forms. You can customize any of these and you can easily create your own from scratch. So let's just use this one, this email with consent. We'll use that template. You can now come in and customize this, change whatever you want on here. I'm gonna leave it as it is, it's perfectly fine for now. But you can see we have the options there to change anything we want. We can click and find out exactly what's gonna happen here. So we can set tags. We can choose where you want to have double opt-in, recapture and so on. Come back out of this and you can see we've got theme set in so we can customize the layout, the style, the buttons, the fields that are available. Let's click on there, for example. You can see you can customize the different types of fields, the look and feel and so on. Come to your form layout and you can see we can choose what kind of form layout we want. This is the embed option. You can set your form with those kinds of good things. If we now try to click to enable the form, you'll see it tells us we've got an issue. Let's fix that issue. And all we need to do is put a link into our privacy policy, which is always good practice. We'll pop that in there. There we go. Let's say check for issues. Everything is now looking good. Let's enable that form. Uh, there's our ID and everything else we need. So we can copy that little bit of code and click done our form ready to be inserted into our template page, whatever it is. So for our example, I want to embed this into the template for my post so I can have a little sign up subscribe section at the bottom. So all we need to do is come into in this example into bricks and we're going to add in just the code element There's our code. We'll add that in, make sure it's in the right spot. And then we'll get rid of what's inside there, paste in our little bit of code. And there we go, there's our form embedded into our site. Now when we subscribe, that will automatically be added in to our Omnisend account. So now that's embedded into our site, we can use Omnisend then to track that information. As you can see, we've got the number of views, the submit ratings, and so on. So we can find out a lot more about that form, the form type, etc., etc. But we can still do a lot more. We could now come into automations. So let's take a look at exploring those workflows from here. So let's say we want to keep this super, super simple. All we want to do is say, thank you very much for signing up. Now we can use the welcome email workflow and we now have access to that workflow. And the cool thing here is if you are like me and you're not necessarily the best at writing your headlines and things like that, you can use AI, which is built directly into Omnisend. Anywhere you see this little symbol, we can tap into AI. So again, like I showed you earlier, we have a trigger and that trigger tells it to do something. So there's our trigger. Then we're going to say we wait for one minute and then we send them a welcome email. And as you can see, we've got these little symbols now in the corner for the subject line, the pre header and so on. And we can use those to generate AI content so we can click. 
We'll say, how would you like to modify your subject line? We could use any of these kind of preset options or we can add something else in. Let's tell you what we wanted to do. Hit enter or return. And you see now it shows us a couple of options, including the little short codes that we can use to personalize the actual information for the subject line. So we can personalize it by dropping their name in, those kinds of things. So, hey, contact first name, welcome to the family. Let's say we like the look of that one. And you can see that now drops it in. If you want to carry on customizing this and making changes, you absolutely can do. But we'll say we're happy with that. You could do the same there for the pre-header if you want to. So now we can easily carry on and create additional options inside here. If you want to add extra sequence information, and we can do. Then once everything is all set up, save your workflow and start it. And then there's your workflow and you can find more information out from there. So we've now seen multiple different ways from the simple way of just getting people to fill in a form and add them to your WordPress database, not the best way of working, right the way up to a platform like OmniSend, which allows you to very easily connect your website with a simple plugin and then be able to manage various different aspects of the whole setup of subscribers, marketing to them, automations, handling things like sign-up forms, pop-ups, and various different ways in which you can get people onto that mailing list, which, as we said at the top of this video, is one of the most important things you can do as a business moving forward. Hopefully this has been interesting and like I said at the top of the video, if you want more information on any of the different methods that I've covered in this video, please let me know in the comment section down below and then I'm going to take a look at creating more detailed tutorials on those topics for you. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below and if you'd like to save 30% off your first couple of months with OmniSend, you can use the link down there to do just that. As always, my name's Paul C, this is WP Tats and until next time, take care. Thank you.